So, we're still in the midst of the Paradox 99 cross crisis on Xide with Parad finally figuring out how to get to Emu, and it comes from attacking Poppy with intent to kill her. And as is common for most common writers, uh, when you're attacking someone helpless, usually that's the Berserk button. And it makes a bit more sense than some of the others for this to be the, that way with Emu, considering everything he's gone through lately in failing to save people, and how that's gotten him angered, and also hit, factoring in his um, chosen profession as a doctor makes it all the more appropriate. It's kind of odd, though, since he kind of did that last week a bit with the others before um, Emu finally got up and started fighting him, but it wasn't completely all, all outright, so... <clears throat> I think the idea was from it is that he was targeting someone who um targeting someone implicitly instead of crushing his compatriots um with no quarter. And so after a short fight involving all the other riders, um he and Emu go over to the next genome institute where this all began to have their final, because, yeah, it's not their final battle, battle. Um, during, during the, um, interim here, there's a pretty nice, um, moment with Emu saying farewell to everyone and pretty much charging everyone else to carry on in his stead if he doesn't make it. But, um, throughout the episode, that, them, um, reminiscing, not, I shouldn't say reminiscing, but dwelling on his words in how they decide to act. Like, um, <clears throat> Taiga and Nico focusing on clearing Kamara Chronicle, but realizing that it's just, they're, they're just looking for an excuse to back up Amu, and they find it in the fact that they probably need to defeat Parad to help clear Kamara Chronicle anyways. And with, um... Kagami, it's um, pretty much the role of the doctor and how difficult it is to fight a infection like this on your own. So even if it's a doctor that's fighting his own illness, it's probably in a doctor's best duty to at least assist in the operation, so to speak. It, I'm, I'm thinking in Kagami terms here. Um, it, so it's pretty much him, for the moment, looking past his whole intern excuse for why Emu is beneath him. So, yeah, they both end up deciding to back him up on that. Poppy, however, um, shows everyone else the level zero um, Mighty Action X gosh odds and the extra gamer driver with her thinking that from the manual that this will be the way to help Emu because it'll prevent um, Parad being able to possess him and disable him at the worst moments since, you know, that'll, um, fix, um, not fix, hack the power, the, make them unequal even though they're at the same level, essentially cheating the system with regards to level and power wrecks and all that, which, admittedly, it has a bit, um, as Amu's definitely not in the best of shape, even though he's forcefully suppressing his own game syndrome infection to be able to fr to fight Prod despite him glitching out repeatedly. So, um, it, him forcing him to suppressing, suppression is a showcasing of his will, but in the back of your mind, you got, you got to be thinking that even with him forcibly pr pr um, suppressing it to fight Parad all out, it's got to be affecting his stamina and ability to fight Parad on even terms. Um, Parad puts it in the terms of all of uh, Emu's um, genius gamer skills were coming solely from him, so without him, he's always at a disadvantage. But I'm thinking it more has to do with that sapping of his stamina in why, um, even when they're, they seem to be on equal terms, that Parad still seems to have a slight advantage over him, especially since they paralleled through the health bars where... Um, 
Parad always seems to have one bar more than Emu does at any point in the battle, even though they keep showing the gauge decreasing. And the, sure enough, the battle does end with um, <coughs> Emu at, on his last bar and then just jacking out so he doesn't game over while Parad's at, I think, one or two more and still able to fight. Um, so yeah, there's all that. But amidst this... As I was saying, uh, Asuna is trying to figure out the level zero gashods and how that works. She tries playing into her buggle into her buggle drivers. Why? Oh, speaking of, yeah, she didn't at all lose her um, heartbeat Tokimeki Crisis gashods or the driver when she threw it away a couple episodes ago. She she just suddenly has it back now. So I'm figuring that they just retrieved it after they. Um, had their whole um, heart to heart when she was put back, uh, added back onto the team. Actually, she gets a pretty good um, fight against Motors with Nico uh, supporting her at the beginning of the episode. That was actually pretty entertaining because it is the first time in the entire franchise we have had two female writers not only on the same show but fighting together against a monster, and that is that was very nice. Yes, I wish they'd done more of this. Um, not even just done more of this, and, okay, they technically did it in Wizard and Magic Land, but that was an alternate universe version with mass production rider gears. This is the first time we've had it with two separate identity riders, like, um, like, say if it was a team-up between Fom and Nadeshiko in some special event, or Kivala and Nadeshiko, since they're the two female riders before this that haven't exactly, that haven't died. Or hell, even in, with it, with respect to the to just Gaim, um, Idun and Marika. That would have been nice to see, despite Idun being a just a um, just in a visa mode. But you get my point. This is this is a new thing, and especially from a series um, produced whose head producer is you is um. I'm forgetting the guy's name now, but he's kind of behind why we were so irritated that Kiriko didn't go Kamen Rider in Drive. It's one of the producers. Takahiro Mori, that was it. That was it. So, it's nice to see a change of pace with this guy as the producer and him not suppressing this kind of thing, but, you know, them actually having them part of the main team. This was nice to see, and I'm hoping that in the next... Ooh, we probably got about 18 episodes left of the series, that we'll get a few more of those fights like that, because this... That's it's a diff it's a nice change of pace. Anyways, Asuna goes uh, tries triggering the prototype Proto Mighty Action X because it's not Proto Mighty Action X. That one's purple. We we really need a good way to to um, differentiate this prototype Gashots from the Proto Gashots. It's like. The level zero mining action next. We need we need a good distinguishing thing. Anyways, she goes into um, using her bugster powers that gaw shots, and after being chased by the bugsters inherent to it for a bit, she finds one that's pretty much stuck on idle, it's just like minding its own business, um, stuck in a recursive loop, and um, it's mumbling something to itself, and she realizes is. She knows this person. She knows this bugster. And she just jacks the um, the uh, gamer driver onto her, and it turns out that this idle bugster is actually a copy of Kuroto. And then it's the mumbling, it's, what it's mumbling to itself is made clear. It's saying, I am immortal, which were Kuroto's last words. Yeah, he's back again even though he just got killed in the la- like, not even- let's see, it's episode 30, he died in episode- six weeks ago! He's been dead six weeks, and, like, not even six weeks, we had the whole, um, Kamen Sentai Go Rider miniseries, where he resurrected himself from the dead as part of a game system where if he got it to complete, he would revive, and they had to kill him again. It's like, uh, it's like, how many times are you going to come back from the dead, dude? 
it's like, and he killed himself to create um, uh, da the dangerous zombie Gashad. Every time dangerous zombie died, dangerous zombie just revived him. Every time Krota, sorry, rephrase. Every time Krota died, well, in his level X form, dangerous zombie just revived him. Um, Parad killed him after um, dangerous zombie was defeated, and like I said, the the um, Common Sentai Go Rider uh, that series killed him again. It's like, how many times are you gonna keep bringing this guy back, dude? And you haven't even okay. You had one with Kiria, but that was kind of the point of that of the Go Rider miniseries that he was dead. Ugh. Um. So yeah, now this is adding some legitimacy to the. Um, Clear Common Rider Chronicle and everyone that's died through the Bugster effects will be revived from the dead thing that they've said was going to happen, which n within the series they didn't, no one thinks it actually is going to happen. That was just a lie told them told them. This is adding some legitimacy to that possibility that from the previews is possibly going to be explored with them trying to revive Kyria. I mean, in the cr opening credits, they still have a placeholder spot for him that is just bugged out. So, could they actually end up reviving him before the series to have an all um, Exide Rider conflict for to really end the series? I mean, we're only just now getting possible preview information, like the barest of barest stuff on Exide's movie. So. If they're going to bring back Kyria for that, this would surprise no one at this point, but... Oh, and also, since they did the Flowers handoff for him, but they also did it for Graphite, but Graphite is now in the series again, that may just mean that his role as a regular at that time was done, and then they bring him back as a possible recurring, since he still seems to be relevant in the show. So pretty much what I'm bouncing back and forth is... Are they going to do this at some point, since they keep doing it with Kuroto? Um, admittedly, Kuroto seems to be that one, that type, part of the archetype of villain that just will not die, which is, amu um, is amusing because they, they most often use that type of villain in um, video games. Um, one of my favorites of that was Seymour in Final Fantasy X as a as a villain that literally just will not die due to the whole um, undead spirits and Spira thing. But, um... I don't even know where I'm going with this, but yeah. Gatum Level Zero. It's a silver-edged repaint of Gatum Level 2, which I'm not adverse to. I liked the whole Gatum suit. And it succeeds in doing its job of suppressing the Bugster virus so they can get Emu away from Harad for the moment. And that should probably um, give them the advantage they need to at least defeat Paradox Level 99 once, or something, because we presume this is leading into the reveal of um, Exide Muteki, which should be in the next couple episodes, alongside the reveal of Kamara Kronos, since the Bug Gold Drivers Away is in stores now in Japan. So it would make sense to, you know, do it in the next month. We also got, in hell, after that, we have um, a potential for Brave Level 100. So, yeah, we're probably... This is all probably wrapping up to Muteki, but not necessarily certain where they're going with it yet. Since, um, now, Kuroto has been revived, but as a Bugster-type life form... And admittedly, there is a hilarious scene at the end of the episode where <coughs> Ox o Asuna sucks the Bugster Kuroto into her Buggle Driver to pretty much just keep him on a leash, which is all types of hilarious to me. But, um, it's... It feels like they're going to end up having more of a pseudo-hostage situation with him and that limitation, as he probably doesn't want to remain a bugster for the rest of his existence. And, hell, that actually raises a question, since um, <coughs> part of last week's episode and Parad's entire plan was that um, 
Bugsters cannot use the gamer drivers. They have to use the um, the Bugster buckles and the um, the just they just you know use the entire the um, Buggle driver components to transform to their Bugster forms or transfer them into a Common Rider form. They can't use the drivers as normal because they don't have human type data. So. With Kuroto now as a bugster, is the reason he can use a gamer driver because it was before they created that lockout, or is it because that um, he still possesses his human data because he is a human that was di digitized by his death? So it, it's an inconsistency that bugs me, so I feel should be explained in some form and not just hand-waved because of how big a deal it was for Parade to even be able to use a gamer driver to transform into level 99. So, yeah, a lot happened this time. Good character moments. Um, it seems, though, that they're kind of beating the, the same points. They're going to be beating the same points again and again into the ground with the... Um, fight against per Paradox level 99. Since it, it, feels, it doesn't feel much different than the curb stomping that Paradox level 50 had for a great deal of the early side of the show. It's just re reasserting that previous status quo at a time where it doesn't feel like it, the show is progressing much with him despite these revelations. It's like, yep, same fights over and over again. Um, in other news, um, I just finished watching Garo Yami Watara Sumono, so I should be pretty much through October in scripting for stuff for the show. Just updates on that. I'll leave my thoughts for that series in the videos if you've seen it on me on Twitter. I ultimately came out kind of meh with the show, and I kind of need to some time to conceptualize why that is. Um... And yeah, that's all it for me. I will see you all next week.